Hello, everybody. Um, welcome back to another online class here. Today, we are going to start meiosis. Um, this is different than mitosis. Hopefully, you reviewed that yesterday. If you have your science notebook at home, uh, you're going to be taking notes just like you would uh, any other class. If you don't have your notebook home, don't worry. There are um, notes available online. But you know, making up your own is preferable to just using mine. Oh, went back to the wrong screen there. Using mine because you're going to make it your own. Uh, you've done that by now. So um, first thing we ought to understand is meiosis is different than mitosis. Mitosis is dealing with body cells um, for your fingernails, for your skin. Meiosis is dealing with reproductive cells, um, how an organism um, creates another organism. And what I have here is a YouTube video um, with two Chinook salmon, okay? And you can see a GoPro video here in the back. And what people um, have done is is capture this on film because it really is, um, this this reproduction, this spawning is, is a good example of, of what happens. We have a, a male and a female um, Chinook salmon here. What the female do is gonna she's gonna lay eggs in this little depression. She's used her fins to make a depression in the, in the gravel here, and then the male will release his cells at the same time, and they're gonna mix in the water. And the idea is you're getting genetic information from the female and genetic information from the male. Now these body cells of the Chinook for the fins, for the scale, for everything, they have 46 chromosomes. But if you took 46 from here and 46 from here, the offspring would have too many chromosomes. So they're very special cells for meiosis. Um, they're called zygote cells. And the zygote cells only have 23 chromosomes. 23 from the mom, 23 from the dad salmon. So that way, when they merge, they literally merge, the two cells merge, you'll end up with an egg, an egg of a for a salmon that has 46, 23 from the mom and 23 from the dad. So that process of going, all right, how do we get 23 chromosomes instead of 46? That's what meiosis is about because you can't have 40, um, 46 from here and 46 from here because then... The offspring would have 92, and that's not going to work. You need to have 23 coming from the mom salmon and 23 coming from the dad. So we'll just play this um, a little bit here. And you can see right here, females laying, these are the salmon eggs. Okay? Each one of those eggs has 23 chromosomes in it, 23 chromatid. Now the male is going to release his cells into the water, and each of these is going to be like a kind of white cloudy. Each of these tiny little cells, they each have 23. And if they come in contact with the egg, they may fertilize. And then that egg would now have 46 chromosomes. 23 from mom and 23 from dad. Okay. Right there. So that's what we're talking about. How do we get to 23? All right. It's going to seem really similar to mitosis, but there's a few differences, all right? Okay, I'll put this link in this, this YouTube video in the Google Classroom, and uh, we'll get started. Okay. So first, just like any other, just like mitosis, meiosis, right here, is going to start with interphase. And the same things happen. Organelles are duplicating, cytoplasm increases, it's going to grow and develop. Okay, so nothing different there. Um, if you want to pause the video here and go ahead and make that note, you can do that. Um, notice how we are drawing some of the chromosomes as a single chromatid and some of them with their sister uh, chromatid right here. All right. If you just want to keep watching, go ahead and you can keep watching. All right. Now, notice we have meiosis 1, because we're going to go through this twice. 
right? And we have prophase one. That's the capital letter I, Roman numeral I for prophase one. Because we're going to go through prophase a second time. Okay, this is prophase one, the first time we're going through it. A lot of this is the same as mitosis. Some of it is a little bit different. All the chromatid have duplicated, and we now have 46 chromosomes, because we're counting the centromeres, and we have 92 chromatid. That hasn't changed. We end up with double the amount. The nuclear membrane begins to break down, same as before. The chromosomes can ooze out into the cytoplasm. Centrioles form, spindle fibers form. Okay, so at any time you want to pause the video, you can go ahead and you can make those notes. Um, so everything is the same, but something different happens here. As the chromosomes move into the cytoplasm, they start to begin to find their homologous pair. And that means something that's genetically similar. The chromosomes are different sizes and shapes. And what they do is they start to pair up with one that is about the same size and shape as they are. And you'll notice these are two about the same size. These two are a little bit smaller. They start to pair up with their homologous pair. Right? When they pair up, that starts the diversity because you're going to start to cross over. And you see right here, this isn't a mistake. These two legs of the DNA are actually crossing over each other, which means they switch information from one to another. And that's kind of important now, but it's going to be even more important later. So they start to line up with their homologous pairs, and then some crossover may occur, which means you're going to get some swapping of genetic material from here and here. So if this was our female salmon, she may have gotten some information about scale size and fin size and eye color and gill size um, or overall size and th muscle strength in general from its parents and its parents. And then some of that material is on its dad's from its dad's side and it's that side of his genetic history. That might be on this one, but when they cross over, some of that material is swapped. It would be like you trading work with someone else. It would be some of your work, some of their work. It's sort of a blend of the two. So we're starting to get some diversity right here. So interphase was the same. Prophase was very similar. But we have a few differences. Uh, when they ooze out, the chromatid move out into the cytoplasm, they meet up with their homologous pair, which means they're genetically sort of similar. And then some crossover can occur when the, the genetic material literally crosses over on top of each other. All right, so that was prophase. You should know we're heading into metaphase. And instead of a single line now, what we have is the homologous pairs line up in the middle. Remember, M for middle. The homologous pairs line up in the middle. The spindle fibers are attaching to the central mirrors, okay? We have 46 chromosomes and we have 92 chromatid. But instead of a single file line like we did in mitosis, in meiosis, they're gonna line up in the middle with their homologous pair. So these two are genetically identical, All right? Okay, anaphase is next and Cytokinesis begins, that little side process. Here's our cleavage furrow. The spindle fibers start to retract. Now, when they start to retract, they're separating not the chromosome where you have one of the chromatid coming this way and one of the chromatid going this way like we did in mitosis. Here in meiosis, the homologous pairs separate. So we still have a full X shaped here. Okay, and a full X shaped here. If I go back to mitosis for a second, you can see how it was a single line and we split that chromosome and half the chromatid went that way and half the chromatid went this way. 
in meiosis, we have a homologous pair. One half the pair go that way, and one half the pair go that way. So 23 chromosomes, full X's. There's 23 full X's going this way, and 23 full X's going that way. That means 46 chromatid are going this way, and 46 chromatid are going that way. Okay, so that is anaphase 1. Okay. Okay. Telophase 1. The cleavage furrow deepens because cytokinesis is continuing. The nuclear membrane returns. The nucleolus returns. And I think I forgot to draw that there. The spindle fibers and centrioles are gone. Okay. Um, they are not needed anymore. So that's pretty much the same. Now the difference is we have 23 chromosomes here, 23 chromosomes here, full X's, which means there's 23 pair or 46 chromatid here and 46 chromatid there. Cytokinesis completes and we end up with two genetically different cells. Because they did some crossing over, and because then we split it up, they're not identical. They're going to be very, very similar, but they're not going to be identical. Okay. Uh, now, they're not called daughter cells here because they're not identical. What we call these here are z gametes. These are now called gametes because they're very similar, but they're not identical. All right. There's 23 full-shaped X's here. That means 46 chromatid. And there are 23 full X's here or 46 chromatid there. All right. All right. We're going to pause the, uh, the lesson here. I want you to go ahead and make those drawings today. All right. If you need to, go back and rewatch this and look, look over it. And then make the drawings for meiosis 1. That should include interphase, okay, all the organelles. Okay, and these notes here grows and develops just like we had before. Meiosis 1, prophase 1. Okay, it's pretty much the same. We got your centrioles and spindle fibers, nuclear membrane breaking down. The difference here, when they start to ooze out the chromosomes, they line up with a homologous pair, one that's sort of genetically similar to them in size and shape. And some crossover could occur. Some genetic material could be switched. All right. So that's the major, major difference there. In metaphase, the difference here is they're not a single line. They're a double line. There's two of them. They line up with their homologous pair like a dance partner. And in anaphase one, the homologous pairs are separated, not the X's. So you end up with full X's going in each direction. Okay. That means we have 23 X's going this way, 23 X's going that way, and that would be 46 chromatid going that way and 46 chromatid going that way. Telophase and cytokinesis are, are basically the same, where your nuclear membrane returns, nucleolus returns, cleavage furrow deepens. You finally get a separation, but they're not identical. We don't call them daughter cells. We call them gametes, okay? All right, I'm going to take a look at your podcast uh, submissions and put that together for today as well. So we have a, a new podcast with animal, plant, and space facts from you, hopefully. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Contact me. A lot of you did a great job yesterday with e emailing, um, Remind app, or Google Classroom questions and comments. And I think it went pretty well. If it's not going well, let me know. All right, I'll see you later.